Hey guys, welcome to one of the fastest growing sports YouTube channels out there, Gold and Blue Dude. When you're a powerhouse in college football, the longer you go without a national championship, the higher the pressure builds to win your next one. Which powerhouse has the most pressure on them to win a national championship this year? Let's go. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's me again, Golden Blue Dude. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. I do college football videos every single day. That's what I do. Hey, guys, don't forget to check out my good friends at TristateWoodsCatch.com. They do amazing work over there. All you have to do is send them the picture that you want transferred onto wood, and he'll get it done. And if you mention Golden Blue Dude, he'll give you 20% off your order. But on this video, I want to talk about the powerhouse teams in college football that have the most pressure to win a national championship this year. So I'm going to grade the pressure on these powerhouse programs from a 1 to 10. 1 being not that much pressure at all. 10 being you better win a national championship this year. The first team is Florida State. They haven't won a national championship since 2013. I'm going to give them three. I think right now Florida State is in the building process. I think Florida State fans know that. I think the goal for Florida State this year is to get to a bowl. The pressure of winning a national championship, not all that high. That's why I gave them a three. Next up, Notre Dame. Their last national championship, 1988. I'm going to give them an eight. Brian Kelly has had Notre Dame on the cusp of winning a national championship or at least being competitive to get there almost on a yearly basis. Now, they did lose some talent this year, but I have to give Notre Dame an eight. Their experience expecting Brian Kelly to deliver a national championship pretty much every year. Not winning a national championship is a letdown to Notre Dame fans on a consistent basis right now. Next up on the list, Penn State. Their last national championship, 1986. They had a big letdown year last year. And from talking to Penn State fans, there's not really that much pressure to win a national championship because they're all depressed. So I'm going to put this as a four. But honestly, I think expectations should be higher for Penn State fans. James Franklin is a great coach. Consistently winning double-digit wins seasons. And last year, yes, a letdown year. And I know, you have to beat Ohio State. I think Penn State is capable of beating Ohio State. You have to have higher expectations, Penn State fans. Next on the list, Tennessee. Uh, I give them a 1. They are in total rebuild mode. They are not expecting Josh Heupel to win them a national championship this year. They know it's not happening. They've accepted it. Maybe hoping for one in the next five years. So I give Tennessee a one. Same thing with this next team, Nebraska. The hopes on Scott Frost are falling dramatically year after year. Nebraska is more worried about getting back to a bowl and being relevant again. Winning a national championship is really not in their sights right now. I'm going to give Nebraska about a two. I'm not saying they're not hoping for a national championship, but they know they're a few steps from there. Many steps from that. The next team, Miami, the Hurricanes. Miami's on that tier where they're pretty good, but they're not really elite. So the pressure that I'm going to put on Miami is about a four. I think they're capable of getting there, but they're just, they're not quite there yet. I mean, number one, they have to worry about North Carolina. North Carolina's pretty good. And then if they were to beat North Carolina, then they have to worry about beating Clemson. And right now, they're just not on Clemson's level. But if they can keep recruiting well, keep building a great team, I think the expectations will grow higher. But right now... Miami's about a four. Texas A&M, believe it or not, the last time Texas A&M won a national championship was in 1939. But Jimbo Fisher is making the expectations go through the roof. I think the expectations for Texas A&M fans are about an eight right now. They expect Jimbo Fisher to win them another national championship. It's been a long time. They definitely don't want to hit that 100-year mark. Next on the list, Michigan. I, I really don't know what number to give them. I I'm going to say a three. I mean, Jim Harbaugh has been a good coach at times, but recently... Not so much. Can't beat Ohio State, but you are Michigan. I don't know. I think they've accepted the fact that they're not winning one anytime soon, but fingers crossed, it could happen. The next team on the list, Florida. Last time they won a national championship, 2008. I think the pressure on Florida to win a national championship is unnecessarily high. I'm going to give it a 7. Guys, y'all need to lower your expectations. Y'all lost a ton of talent from that historically great offensive team last year. And you still didn't do all that well. I, I would bring y'all's expectations down to maybe a 3. Right now... I'm saying for Florida fans, it's going to be a 7. The next team, USC. They haven't won a national championship since 2004. I think USC does have some pressure. I'm going to give them a 7 as well. I think they're fully capable of winning the Pac-12, but the biggest question is, once they win the Pac-12, and if they get into the playoffs, can they do any damage whatsoever? I mean, you're dealing with a lot of great teams right now. Clemson, 
Alabama, Ohio State, Oklahoma. So they do have high expectations, but the chances of them actually winning a national championship, I don't think it's very high, guys. Next team on the list, Texas. I'm going to give them a six. I mean, they just hired a new head coach. I know Texas is Texas, and football is a religion in the state of Texas. But I think right now, expectations of winning a national championship aren't super high. Now, if Sarkeesian starts doing well at Texas, those expectations should climb. But right now, I have it as a solid six. Then the last two. First one, Oklahoma. A nine. Expectations super high. Lincoln Riley is recruiting at a high level. They have a favorable schedule. And I think once they get into the playoffs, because I do think Oklahoma does get to the playoffs, Oklahoma can do some damage. I think they can get to the national championship and win a national championship. So I think those expectations are high and should be high. They haven't won one since the year 2000. Then the last team I'm going to talk about, Georgia. They haven't won a national championship since 1980. And they hear it on a daily basis. And their expectations this year is a solid 10. This is the year for Georgia fans to win a national championship. They're already calling it. This is their year. They're going to win a national championship. So if Kirby Smart does not win a national championship, you talk about depression. Athens, Georgia will be the epicenter of depression. I mean, they will be bummed out majorly. So yeah, I think the expectations of winning a national championship for Georgia this year maxed out at a 10. And I do have Georgia getting to the playoffs. I think they lose to Clemson, run the table, get to the playoffs, get to the national championship. But can they beat Oklahoma? Because I do think it's going to be Oklahoma and Georgia. Two fan bases with super high expectations this year which fan base is going to grab that national championship trophy and the ecstasy of being a national champion and which fan base is going to fall just short and be dejected yet another year this is why i love college football guys that's all i got for you for this show like and subscribe if you haven't already and i'll see you on my next show